it's time to go take a look at the garden. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Rachel and this is Oxheart Gardening. I started this garden behind me from scratch. It was just lawn um, like a year and a few months ago now. And every week I do garden tours where I talk about all the cool things that are growing in my garden and also all of the things that need attention that maybe aren't going so well to uh, give you guys a holistic picture of how gardening like works in the real world as opposed to just a highlight reel of here's all the pretty vegetables I grew. You guys normally don't get to see the garden in the mornings because I'm normally not a morning person but this morning I woke up and I was just feeling great feeling like looking at the garden. One of the first things I notice is that we actually get to see the pumpkin flowers open for once because they're never open in the middle of the day. A cute little bee hanging out in there. Also, if you're new here, this is Draco. He is my older garden cat. He's nine years old now. And I've had him since he was a baby. And he loves hanging out with me in the garden. Also in the mornings, we are more likely to see mushrooms. Uh, because they would usually dry up by the middle of the day, but these are they're not an edible mushroom I don't think um, or if they are there's not a good point in eating them. I'm pretty sure they're ink caps um, And you know that if you spread them and they get black ink on your fingers All right, so coming over to where we normally start first thing I want to point out is that my papalo is dying slash dead um, I don't know if it was a storm or an animal that ran through here, but it just broke clean off at the stem. I had noticed that happening with individual branches and I was like, huh, this thing is like really brittle. Um, and it does, it just snaps um, instead of bending, which is uh, really interesting to me uh, and good to know because now I don't have any papalo. Um, and I would take this inside and dry it, but the whole point of having it was to have it fresh because I wanted fresh leaves to be using in things like salsa and guacamole. So <laughs> even though I put all the effort into growing this cilantro substitute during the summer, it looks like I'm gonna end up buying at least some amount of fresh cilantro from the so store, which is a little disappointing, but you know, that's sometimes how things go in the garden. I am still picking tomatoes. Uh, this weekend I made some sauce with some of my friends um, and last week when I was picking tomatoes, one of you guys asked uh, why I seem to be picking them earlier than you might. And the answer is a little complicated. Um, so tomatoes, they will ripen off the vine um, as long as they have just a tiny bit of blush to them. Like even, you see how this one is slightly less green than this one? This one will ripen totally off the vine, and this one, because it's full size, it might even also ripen off the vine. Um, and so you can pick them early and allow them to ripen indoors. And an advantage to this is uh, a few different reasons. So if you have pests that might be going for your tomatoes uh, once they ripen, then you can pull them super early, let them ripen indoors, and have a whole tomato instead of <laughs> an eaten tomato. And the other reason is this. So this is a crack in my tomato. This happens usually due to a, a large influx of water after the tomato is done growing. So the plant takes up more water than the fruits can handle and the skin splits. And so if you've got ripe tomatoes or ripening tomatoes and you know there's a big rainstorm coming, you can't control the flow of water, then you might wanna pull them before they get cracks like this. And these ones also, all of these cracks are from that water issue. So even though the tops are still a little green, I'm going to go ahead and pull them inside before they get infected really with bacteria. Oh wow, this one is a big one. Oh, and it has a little hole in it. That's lovely. Not really, but you can cut around these holes. This is still a good salsa tomato. I just have to kind of piece it apart. This one looks like it might actually be fully ripe because it was hidden. Oh, and look at this. This is actually a good opportunity to show you guys. I thought this was a new bug in the garden a while ago, and when I tried to look it up, I couldn't find it. And I realized it is the nymph form 
of a common bug. It's a green stink bug nymph. Um, and stink bugs aren't really like huge pests in the garden, so I'm not super worried about them. I think he's very cute. Um, but if you didn't know, insects look different in their baby stages than they do in their adults. We've got some more over here. I left these a little longer than I should have. Oh, yeah, and this is why um, I would normally pick early. Uh, let's see, how bad is the damage? Are all of these? Oh, yeah, that's not good. This one, oof, that's looking kind of rotten. I don't know if I, I care to save that, that's gross. Let's see if some of these up higher off the ground. Okay, this one looks okay. Minor holes. We've got... This one is actually okay. Look at that. Cherokee purples <laughs> attracting all the insects. And this one is a little bit of damage, but not so, so bad. This is also a good opportunity to mention that um, tomatoes often would grow along the ground like that, um, and the reason we trellis them up is to avoid stuff like that. Oh, this one? Oof. That is rotten. I'm gonna set you guys down to get that off. Just pulled this one off, and this is a great opportunity to remind you guys about cat facing or faciation. Um, this is when a bunch of flowers from the tomato fuse together before they're even pollinated. They just grow that way and then they get pollinated and these fused flowers make a fused tomato. Um, and some people don't like it because of these cracks where bacteria can get in, um, bugs can hide and all sorts of stuff. Um, but other people like them because they make large tomatoes, um, which is impressive and cool. These are my San Marzono tomatoes, the uh, famous Italian variety used for sauce making. If you didn't know, there is a difference between sauce tomatoes and slicing tomatoes as far as like the inner water content versus flesh um, that makes some, you can make sauce out of any tomato, but these, it just is easier because there's more flesh per tomato and there's less water to evaporate out to get a good sauce consistency. those on just a little longer. Well I've got this entire basket full of tomatoes now. Oh it's heavy. I'm gonna have to go get my second basket already. All right I've got a fresh basket and I'm gonna come down my row of peppers. Um, this is kind of hard to get through these days um, but I'm gonna muddle through. I'm not gonna make you guys watch the shaky camera while I do that. However I am going to step over here um, you can start seeing the ripe peppers through the foliage, um, which is pretty convenient. Um, there we go. Mm, there's another one back here. Some of these are coming out with a little damage. I think it is due to the um, infection that these guys have. Uh, I've mentioned before that I think it's either fungal or bacterial. Um, but it's something that spreads via contact and potentially the soil. Um, so I have some tests actually that I can perform to see if this is bacterial. Uh, I just have to wait for a friend with a microscope to become available. And for those of you who don't know, this is my other garden cat, Kata. She is, I think, two and a half now. She's much more rambunctious than Draco, so she will be the one running around and trying to catch me while I'm rustling the leaves. But anyways, once I figure out what exactly is wrong with my peppers, then I can go about thinking about how I'm going to treat it. And of course, I'm going to talk to you guys about all of this problem solving process um, as it's unfolding. <laughs> um, but right now I am just kind of waiting to be able to perform the necessary experiments to move forward. Whatever this is though, it seems like the eggplant and the basil are completely immune to it. Um, so that is a good data point, um, but also just very relieving. Peppers will also continue to ripen indoors. 
Um, this is an Oda pepper, and it is starting to turn red. They all start purple. Uh, so since it's corking, I'm going to go ahead and pull it and let it finish ripening inside. You guys see this gook on the leaves? This is a uh, bug poop, basically. I'm not entirely sure what kind, though. It's not tomato hornworm. Um, but it is potentially a caterpillar, because you can see the Swiss cheese leaves up here. Um, whatever it is, it's eating uh, kind of slowly. It's not absolutely decimating the plants, but I'm not entirely sure just from this what it is. But it's good to note that this is usually caterpillar poop of some kind. Alright, so we are back up to the front of our row. This is where my giant kale is, um, and it is actually not doing so great. Um, it's got a bunch of these on it, which is actually what I was saying earlier, the nymph form and the adult. So the nymph is over here and the adult is over here. Um, I think this is called a harlequin bug. Um, oh, there's a lot. I bet these are why this looks so awful. Oh, grasshopper. Um, yeah, this is, this is doing so badly I can smell it like rotten lettuce in the fridge. Um, so I might have to cut this out. I have a feeling if I cut it back, like not all the way, it might regrow from its stem this winter. So I might try that out. But of course, that's one of those things that I have to find the time to do. And often I feel like I am behind when it comes to doing stuff in the garden. Corn though, corn is looking great. It is just now starting to tassel. Um, so what has to happen for corn to actually make kernels, which are its seeds, pollen has to fall from up here onto every single one of these little silks. And each of these is attached to a kernel. Um, and so if all of these get pollinated, you get a really full ear of corn. And if they don't, that's when you get bare spots, um, which is why it's important to plant corn kind of close together because the wind usually is what's blowing this and getting the um, pollen onto all the neighboring corns. Oh, look at this mushroom. Not 100% sure what this is. It, uh, it looks a little older, so not like super fresh, but it's definitely not dried out. Um, I do have wine caps planted in these wood chips, which would eventually turn a brown after they got kind of old. Uh, I didn't see it until just now, so it's hard to say for sure. Looking at my basil, it is definitely time to make more pesto because it is starting to flower again. And uh, in order to maintain the flavor of basil, you have to keep cutting all these flowering tips off, which is just a good excuse to harvest basil and make something tasty. Alright, so if we look at the arched trellis, it is kind of reversing its prettiness. So this side was pretty for a while, and now this side is looking great. The pumpkin is going all the way up to there. Um, and my cucumber, I have let these go to seed so that I can save seeds from these. Um, and the plant was also not doing great previously, so it's kind of dying. Um, and so cucumbers actually, when they go to seed, you have to wait until they're way past edible in order to get seeds out because this is starting to get kind of tough. Um, and so I'll do a video showing you guys how to save seeds out of that. But yeah, this plant looks awful. I could plant another round of cucumbers. Um, still deciding whether or not I care to do that. Noodle bean trellis though looks like something out of a fairy tale. Especially with these adorable little curly Q vines coming down. I have like kind of given up keeping up with harvesting them all um, and I'm letting them make big beans inside because the dried beans are quite edible um, and it's still making enough that if I want fresh beans I can come out and just choose the ones that are ripe um, and everything else that doesn't get picked stays and starts plumping up and making these beans um, and also I've got other beans about to come in in the garden so I won't be needing all of this for fresh eating anymore. On the other side of this trellis um, we have all of the volunteer turnips and potatoes and uh, sweet potatoes 
kind of fighting for their life among the jungle here. Um, I was thinking that the potatoes would be done soon because they were kind of looking like they would, but they've sort of stalled out at this stage. Um, so I'm just going to keep waiting um, and be patient with them. I don't know if I get to show you guys noodle bean flowers very often, but those are very pretty. I was walking back through the trellis and I saw these on my pumpkin leaves. These are squash bug eggs. You can see they're like a reddish brown and they are kind of in a cluster. Um, these are squish on site kind of eggs um, and they're a little tough so I usually take them over and uh, press them in between my finger and the uh, concrete. Um, you'll feel them pop but yeah squash bugs absolutely will take over if you give them a chance. Um, the natural predators that they have are just not prolific enough to keep them from destroying these plants so I'm very vigilant and I crush every egg I see. Okay and if we come down this last row the zinnias still blooming. One of the reasons I love them. We've got flowers in all stages old blooming and about to bloom on the same plant. Um, so these just keep making beautiful flowers which is it just needs needs to be in every garden I think these beautiful flowers also they are attracting the most beautiful butterflies I've seen like blue and black butterflies and yellow ones and even some orange ones I'm not sure if they're monarchs probably not um, but they do have that similar coloring oh and look at that this one is almost ready these are uh, golden honey peppers and then let's see haven't really had peppers ripening on this side as fast. Oh, this one is finally starting to ripen. I'm pretty sure this one is a hot pepper. Oh, look, and there's more here. These teeny little pumpkin ones. I've also been getting these. I think they're moths. I'm not sure. I think butterfly wings have to be straight out, but there's a lot of these um, in the past couple weeks or so. Moving down. We have more peppers here. Um, some of these are recognizable. These two are cayennes. They're making these long, thin peppers. This radish here is actually still blooming. Um, it looks a little sick. It made pods, and then I forgot about it. And now it's trying again. I also have an experimental Brussels sprout here, which has been here since the winter, and it never flowered. So I thought, what the heck, I will leave it and see what happens. Next to him I have acorn squash. Um, I had thought these might be ready to harvest by now, but they're not quite. If you didn't know, any squash can actually be harvested as either a summer or a winter squash. Um, it's just all about the timing of when you harvest it. Pumpkins, you could harvest them as little babies and uh, the skin would be soft and you would be able to kind of eat them up the way you do a zucchini. Um, and similarly, you could let a zucchini keep growing, get huge, and then the skin would toughen up and it would store like a winter vegetable. All right, we are moving on to the raised herb bed for just a quick check-in. Um, mostly nothing's changed over here. I did pull, uh, like chop off all of the, what is this, parsley that had gone to seed. You can see even the little bit that's left is still trying to continue going to seed. And my thyme has finally stopped going to seed. There's like the remnants of some flowers here. Um, but this is basically done going to seed. Um, this one is also looking like it's about done going to seed. And stevia has not gone to seed yet. And just thinking about it, I've actually never seen sage flower. Uh, I'm not sure what conditions would trigger that. But my sage always looks like this good. It doesn't matter if it's like 100 degrees outside or freezing outside. It just always looks like this and then looking at my berry bushes, um, you can see the weeds are still quite a bit of an issue. This was actually all covered in weeds before I started pulling stuff out. Um, and you can see I've still got this area to do in here. Uh, keeping up with the weeds in this area has been more challenging than I would have thought. So I'm going to have to think about uh, better ways to manage this. Um, but you can see, oh no, this one is must have gotten dug up after I dug the soil 
to get weeds out. This one is not looking great. I'm gonna have to come back and re-bury uh, him. This one though is actually looking fine. Uh, this is sort of what I would expect to see from a healthy blueberry. Um, and even though it's not growing super fast, it looks, it looks good. So I would be happy with this kind of growth here. I did do a video recently talking about soil pH. I tested the pH in this area because blueberries tend to like more acidic soil because uh, acidic soil allows certain nutrients to be more bioavailable to them. Like this one, these pink leaves, I don't know if that's how blueberries of certain varieties grow or if that's a nutrient deficiency. Um, if you didn't know, I'm still learning too, but I am here to learn alongside you guys. And for the raspberry and blackberry row here, I actually, I don't know if you can see in the grass, there's a trellis I got that I'm going to put in here um, for some of these branches. They were longer before the deer kind of ate them off, uh, but at this point you can't even really tell. Like you can kind of still see where it got eaten, but it has fluffed out again and it looks fine. Uh, same with the strawberry. Strawberries kind of fluffing out again. Hard to see under the weeds, but strawberries doing fine probably going to produce next year and the raspberry bushes never really got chomped so they are also looking great as far as weed management i'm not willing to use a weed fabric um mostly because they're not effective for very long and also at the end of it you get this you know plasticky thing breaking down in your soil that you either have to completely rip up and replace um, or allow to degrade into the environment which you know, all of the above sounds like meh to me. Um, so I usually look for biodegradable options like wood mulch and such. And looking at the mulch over there, it does look like it has broken down quite a bit. So I could potentially um, just reapply mulch more often. That might help my problem out a bit. I also like to use cardboard as a biodegradable weed barrier, which is under those bushes, but the grass actually is coming from next to it and then growing over where the cardboard is um, so gotta maybe combine more cardboard with wood chips the weeds are actually super prolific here um, this is sidewalk here that is growing grass and i know some people who struggle to grow grass in like dirt <laughs> my sidewalk is growing grass that is how uh, vigorous this grass is here we have Bermuda, which is this, which you can see it vines across and then makes roots. Um, and then the other big one we have is whatever this one is called. I'm not sure. Um, it mostly grows in bunches, but it also does a little bit of vining across the way the Bermuda does. Um, and then, the, you know, these two combined, they really just like absolutely take over an area, especially the Bermuda. The roots get so deep. It's so hard to get up and then it just spreads back so fast. All right guys, well that is it for me today. Um, I've got all these tomatoes and peppers to do something with, probably salsa and sauce. And uh, if you're new here, I do a garden tour every single Wednesday. If you wanna catch up, I have playlists for last year and this year. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy gardening.